Hello from Thailand, I'm Vox Machina. I'm building synthesizers and sharing with you so that you can build them too for yourself. Um, I've decided to start making video recordings of my do-it-yourself journey, uh, even though it's still very weird to me talking alone in my office slash studio to my mobile phone. <laughs> so please bear with me as I try to understand how this thing works. Uh, so I started recently to design and build my Eurorack modules and it started to sh start sharing more about the process because it's quite exciting, there's a lot of history, a lot of interesting stuff to share and the models themselves, the one that I'm building, I'm making them available open source on my GitHub repo which I will share the link uh, in the description below. Um, I built kind of myself a goal for this year which is to go back in time to the 60s, to the 70s, to learn from Serge, Moog, Buchla, you know, what was what, what was happening behind their designs, their models, because personally it's, it's the kind of um, soundscape and sound, sound design that I like. I don't know how to explain it, you know, I, I love the sound created by, by these old analog synthesizers. And there's a lot of complexity in some of them, which is quite interesting. Um, so I'm trying to learn from them and, you know, uh, and going throughout the years through modifications that people have been working on some of these modules, uh, building my own extensions to them. And, you know, basically I want to build, even if it's a do-it-yourself kind of hobby, I really am trying to target to build a high quality, full analog module system this year. Uh, built on top of this nostalgia of modular scenes from the 60s, the 70s. And then, you know, next I think I want to start making my own instruments uh, a little bit more outside of the box. But for now, I'm focusing on understanding how they were created, which is quite interesting, the one that we're going to talk today especially, uh, which is about the search programmer. And um, yeah, I've been learning quite a lot, actually, I know. Um, so, you know, I'm adding my own addition, which I'll try to show a little bit today on what I'm trying to do for this specific one. So, yeah, uh, today we're going to look at this big fella, <laughs> which will take me a lot of hours and a couple of white hairs to solder upon, but it's going to be totally worth it. It's not yet complete. I'm building up to test my one of my modifications together on the breadboard. So let's look into it. So behold, Leo Leo, Matrix programmer for Error Rack. This is an incredible stage sequencer programmer coming all the way back from 1973. Uh, curiosity, Leo Leo, it's an it's a Thai expression. I've been living in Thailand for six years now. Uh, Leo Leo means something around quicker or faster. And I just like the combination of words together with the matrix possibilities that I'm building here. So that's where the name is coming from. You know, like I was saying, is uh, it's coming all the way back uh, from the 70s, going through modifications along the years from Ken Stone revisions to Finn revisions to more recent ones and now a couple of my own as well as I try to explain a little bit later and of course originally first created from Serge, Rich Gold and Randy Cohen around 73 and you know I've taken all that knowledge the best that I could of course and trying to build an Eurorack version of it uh, I'm loving it so far, very interactive uh, you can see here a lot of switches, hopefully you can see it. there's eight switches on this side for each stage plus four, one for each stage again I'll explain what that means in a moment you know this just makes me feel like I'm in a, some kind of flight control simulation which is <laughs> very fun uh, I'll leave related links below in the description in case you want to know more about this beautiful piece of music tech history and evolution. You know, unlike most sequencers, this makes no use of any binary counters or decade counters, rather it's using a set of individual stages. Uh, 
each one directly accessible, you know. Uh, even though it's, I have a clock from outside clocking it. I'll explain a little bit later, but uh, you can have a clock from left to right and another clock from right to left simultaneously uh, if, if you want to. Uh, you can access individually, you know, I have four buttons here. Each button will trigger, give me access to a certain stage, you know. Even though the sequence is running, I can just trigger it back to second stage here and play a little bit with it, uh, to any stage, really. Uh, you know, currently I have finally decoded the core circuit which took me quite a while, you know, I'm not an electronics engineer, I'm a software engineer, which helps me understand a little bit better the, um, the development process, let's say. Um, I even included, you know, I will include in the description a link to a simulation that I did, just to understand the circuit, um, and all the different flows, and how a stage works exactly, and how it connects to the other stages as well. I'll leave in the link below, it's very useful for learning, I think so. Speaking of just, just four stages, this thing here that I'm testing here on the breadboard is an addition to the circuit that allows you to have uh, four four-step sequences, four-stage sequences, two eight-stage sequencer, one sixteen-stage sequencer, or even a 216 stage sequencer sequencer I'm repeating sequencer a lot I'm sorry for my Portuguese English accent uh, <laughs> anyway you can have a many variations of this uh, flow you can even control it and make it work in a very random way uh, I'll explain a little bit my ideas my additions so the original one has four stages, as you see here, four by four. Uh, currently in Iraq, there's not like a four by four, as far as I know, maybe there is. Uh, if there is, please let me know. Uh, of, I mean, there's not a four by four version of this search programmer. Uh, I've seen a three row top. So I, I try to be a little creative with the design, as you can see, <laughs> to make it, uh, you know, uh, truly um, a homage to the original, keeping the 4x4 four four matrix and adding all, all the controls to the right. This way it can fit in a Eurorack format 3U. Currently is at 42 HP, which is, you know, relatively, considerably not small. But, you know, that that is another one of my envisions for myself, at least, is to build models that are interactive I have actually space for you to move your fingers between the knobs. I think uh, I'm missing this uh, call to interaction on this new wave of modular uh, synthesizers coming out, uh, even though they are amazingly, amazingly good, some of them. But this is just my personal perspective, I think. So, going back to the possibilities of the matrix, uh, I've added a couple of outputs so far. I had that, you know, you have each row output, of course. I'll do a next, uh, I'll do more videos on this in the future, hopefully, in standing in an Eurorack case and where you can see better and closely what's going on and all the functionality. So I'm just going a little bit over the history and my initial steps, and we'll continue in more details in the next video, don't worry. So the current one has uh, one CV output per row. A, B, C, D. Uh, those are in here as well, uh, as well as a stage output as well, gate uh, and, you, and inputs for triggering the stages themselves individually. And uh, like I mentioned before, I have, I have eight switches uh, to control the stages, plus four here. I'll go through it in a little bit. So I added two more outputs. I've called them A, B, C, D which basically outputs the CV of whatever current row is playing. Um, currently, I have that circuit actually here on the breadboard that I'm texting with the multiplexer and the clock. So you'll have clocks for switching the rows as well as you have clocks here left to right, right to left for the normal or previous version sequencing. Um, 
So I had the ABCD, which we can clock it, and then I had alpha of a multiplexer to use, so I thought, uh, why don't I put it in reverse? So I have another output called uh, DCBA, which outputs the row, but in the reverse order, meaning if there's a clock here, it's, it's on the breadboard right now, right? Imagine there's a clock to trigger to switch the rows. If row A is playing and it's jumping to row B, the reverse is happening at the same time as well. The D row is playing and it will jump to the C row. And this basically allows you to have a two-weight stage sequencer, for example, uh, with these two outputs, uh, which is quite fun. And next I'll be working on cascading implementation through a cable in the back, uh, but I want to make it available somewhere around here in the front, a switch to which you can choose a solo or cascading, cascade, I need to find the right term for that to put it on the front panel. So you can extend this uh, sequencer infinitely if you want to, in theory. Uh, but I want to give the opportunity for you to choose when you're playing live if you wanted to use them solo or if you want to use them together. Uh, you know, I'm trying to reach for maximum interactivity, interactivity and playability. So now I'm going to go back to my, to my vertical clocking, multiplexing, uh, I want to make sure that everything is working properly and uh, I'll just go quickly overview you know we'll go in more details on the next videos you know there are a lot of switches here this you know like a flight control panel this switch is here will mute a step meaning the clock will still go through it of course but it doesn't trigger an output on all gates output there's an all gates output and there's a common pulses output, which will trigger once you trigger the individual stages. Uh, so mute does that. And then these guys here define the rules of the sequencer going from left to right, or if it's going from right to left. And you can have two different sets of rules, basically. At the moment, it's going from left to right. I can define for step two, for example, if I want to stop there. It will stop on the previous one you know I'm just gonna trigger the third step so you can see so step two can be stopped or I can be playing normally or can be skipped completely this is quite an amazing feature you know if you use um, a, like a two-way stage sequencer for example you can have polyrhythms going on which is quite fun so you know just this was just a little bit introduction of what's going on here what I'm testing around here I'm just sharing my updates so far uh, and you know I think it's my first proper video that I'm doing <laughs> so bear with me as I try to understand how the things works uh, let me know in the comments and yeah thanks for watching let me know what you think if I'm missing some reference or if you have any suggestions you know as I mentioned uh, I want this to be collaborative uh, here in Thailand I'm reaching out to the community you know to the builders uh, to you know to collect knowledge to share knowledge to to build to play these are all available on my github which I will leave the links below I've been building other models as well. Uh, I have a resonant low pass gate and a VCO, which actually, which actually are already done, but I didn't make videos about it yet because of reasons. <laughs> and, but I'll be making some videos about them. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's my goal, creating a community, sharing the knowledge and the beauty uh, of these uh, modular analog synthesizers. See you soon.